Hi everyone, my name is Becky Robinson. I'm the founder and CEO of Weaving Influence and I'm so thrilled today to be with Rebecca Bastian to talk about her book, Blaze Your Own Trail. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you for having me. Sure, so as you're coming on today, we hope you'll take a moment to say hello in the chat as we always do. And you know, I'm just personally really grateful to be back with all of you since we switched to the weekly format from our daily format. So if any of our good friends are on the line, be sure to let us know that you're here and let us know where you're calling in from. And then also take a moment to answer our typical prompt, which is what are you grateful for today? So I'm gonna give a shout out today to Kelly, who's on the call with us as our chat host. Today is Kelly's birthday, and I am so grateful for Kelly. So happy birthday, Kelly, and I'm grateful for you and the way that you always do everything I need and keep me on track. Um, and my picture showing up for you, Kelly, today. So I don't know. I should have warned you in advance and had you show your face on your birthday. Um, so welcome in Memphis. And, you know, hopefully several others of you will let us know. Welcome in Chicago. Welcome, Kitty, in Rhode Island. Glad to see you. Um, Kitty is grateful for crock pot, crock pot mac and cheese. Um, I think I might need that recipe. Um, Guy is calling in from Ottawa and grateful for the beautiful sunshine. So Rebecca, would you like to share something that you're grateful for today? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm feeling grateful for the, the health and happiness of my family, my, my two little boys and my husband here were all a little bit sick of each other, but still very grateful to, to be together and, and be healthy. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome Jeff in Arizona, who's grateful for sane voices that keep him centered. Welcome Alejandra in Buenos Aires and uh, let's see, Kristen in Colombia. Uh, good to see old friends and new on today's call. Welcome Micah in Louisiana. Um, and thanks to those of you who are wishing happy birthday to Kelly. So, um, Rebecca, we do have a few prepared questions today, but I let the folks know on the chat that unlike most of the guests that we've had in the series, you and I have never met before today. So it might be great for us to uh, get to know you a bit more. And I do have your bio here, so I'll take a moment to share it. So Rebecca is a corporate culture leader, a tech executive, a writer, an artist, a speaker, a mentor, a wife, a mother, and an aerial acrobat, um, which is really interesting. Um, and you previously worked in corporate roles, executive roles at Zillow and now you have co-founded Own Trail and I spent some time this morning um, checking out the website. It's really interesting um, and so we'll talk more about that at the end of the call. Um, I also happened to catch Rebecca a Medium post that you wrote for Mother's Day and talking about comparing being a new mom to being an entrepreneur with a startup and how you're birthing something brand new. So um, I'm gonna go off script and I would love it if you would tell us just a little bit about what you're trying to get done in the world and why it matters to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think so the the book that I wrote and the platform that I'm co-founding, Own Trail, um, and the book is Blazer Own Trail, are both really centered on um, the, the fact that we as women, but also kind of more universally people, worry about our paths through life and worry about where we're going how we're going to get there, hoping we don't get it wrong. Um, it's something that I've observed through years of conversations as I've been in different mentorship and leadership roles that there's, there's these real worries. And, you know, there's also a lot of things we experience in life that make us feel like we're the only ones going through it because it doesn't get talked about as much when really there's a lot of these shared experiences and they just are a little bit more taboo or a little bit less, less shared. And so both with the book and with OwnTrail.com, I'm really trying to embrace the idea that there is no one right path, um, that we can be okay through all the different twists and turns that life might bring us, and that the, the hard things that we go through or um, you know, the, the different kind of unique experiences are actually really shared experiences and there's solidarity in that fact. Um, and so I, you know, I do that through the book, which is a choose your own journey book. So it lets the reader, um, you know, at the end of each chapter, make a decision, which tells you what chapter to go to next. So really kind of experientially um, realizing that, you know, the choices we make aren't necessarily going to lead to predictable outcomes and it's not all going to be easy, but we're going to be okay. And um, by weaving data into that, really kind of creating that sense of solidarity around like the it's told from the perspective of a young woman as she progresses through her life. So really kind of showing the solidarity and the different experiences that, that women might go through or decisions they might make. And then with, sorry, I'll, 
<laughs> no, no, you're good. Oh, Keep going. <laughs> it's all good. But with the own trail platform, then it's really, it's women sharing what their trail through life has been as a series of interconnected milestones. And we consider these to be what we call micro acts of mentorship. So it's really trying to reframe what mentorship means to be more scalable and to reach the 75% of women who aren't giving or getting the mentorship they want to be by sharing these trails through life that are very authentic journeys through our personal and professional lives, and then eventually integrating those together into this kind of neural network of life paths that can be navigated to provide the guidance and inspiration and kind of calls to action that we're looking for. So that's really powerful. And one of the things that you said that I'm super curious about is this idea that we often feel that our experiences are our only ours or unique to us or that we're experiencing something challenging or potentially difficult that others have not. So I'm curious, Rebecca, if there are some themes that you've seen emerge in terms of some common experiences that we all share, but, but we're not necessarily awake to the fact that there are others going through the same thing. Yeah, there's a lot of them, um, you know, I guess, and I, I think I touch on quite a few of them in the book. So some of those, and there's many, but some of those include things like workplace harassment or infertility or grieving or mental health issues or um, abusive relationships or infidelity or, you know, just all these, the things that tend to be a little bit more taboo, but, you know, when you look at the statistics are, are more common than you think. That's helpful. And so you also mentioned, Rebecca, something intriguing that 75% of women don't ever have the chance to have a formal mentor. I, th I think I'm getting that correct. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious about your own experience and particularly the courage to go from what I assume was a pretty stable, well compensated corporate executive level position, which many women might covet or aim toward, and then to step back from that on this less you know, predictable path of being an author and entrepreneur. Can you talk a little bit about um, how you made that shift and um, where you got the strength and support potentially from a mentor? Yeah, that's a great question because, you know, I think it did take other women out there that made me feel confident enough to do it, but they weren't formal mentorship roles. And yes, I mean, I left a very stable, comfortable job that quite honestly was my dream job. I'd really crafted, I'd gone from vice president of product to vice president of community and culture, which was a team and a job that I dreamed up for, for myself at Zillow. And it was like, it was literally the, the best job I could have had. And then once it actually came from, I had written the book, Blaze Your Own Trail, and started kind of realizing that it could be even more powerful as a technology platform and playing around with that. And as I started to really realize that there's some, some important problems to solve and have some big visions for how to solve it, I felt very drawn towards creating that. But the, I think the thing that really gave me the confidence to do that was the fact that I've been, um, I've been an advisor for several female founded startups in Seattle where I live. Um, and I've been just really kind of embedded in and connected to the, the community of women entrepreneurs here. And, and this is kind of one of the things we believe at Own Trail is that we really need to see people who look like us in the places that we aspire to. And of course, look like us can be people who share our same identities or our same experiences, but that's really what gives us both the confidence to go after certain things in life and even the imagination for what we could be going after. And I think that seeing all these completely remarkable women starting companies um, and then realizing that they're amazing, but they're not like a different kind of human than I am. Like if they can do this, I feel like I could do this too. And I have the experience that has set me up to be able to be successful at this. Um, and I think without having that exposure, it would have been a lot scarier and, you know, possibly not even possible to, to take that huge leap and, and become an entrepreneur myself. So really like it's, it's reframing mentorship to say, it's not just about a one-on-one -on -one relationship where someone's giving you all the advice you could possibly need because you know, like, like you mentioned, 75% of women aren't giving or getting the mentorship they want. But even for the 25% that are, like, we're not going to find everything that we need in a single person. I just believe that what, what we really need is kind of the culmination of different experience and advice and, um, and guidance from different people that inspire us. And so I think that's really been a lot of what's um, helped me take this recent leap and just helped me along my career as well. 
So that's really valuable. And one of the things that that leads me to wonder about, so Rebecca, you say something really powerful. So in order to make big leaps or have courage about our careers, we need to have role models who look like us or are like us, or we perceive to be like us, who can lead the way and show us that it's possible, right? Yeah. Um, and so this morning I went on ontrail.com and I tried to start my own, um, my own trail, which I hope to finish and potentially can share with um, you. Um, but one of the things I noticed is that there's a high level of attention to diversity within the initial questionnaire when you start your, um, I don't know what you'd call it, your account or something, when you build your profile. And so I'm wondering, Rebecca, as a, an organization, what you're doing to attract different people so that people who show up can find inspiring mentors who look like them. Yes, thank you for noticing that because it's really like inclusivity is really at the core of what we're building. And because, you know, this one of the scenarios or a big scenario that we want to be able to support is that women can filter down to see trails of people that share their same identities and still see a really significant data set, which means that we have to have a really diverse user base. And so in addition to really kind of um, designing what we're building with inclusivity and intersectional identities at its core, what we're doing in terms of user acquisition is we're partnering with different organizations that support women at different phases of their lives, through different industries and sectors. And we're being really intentional about making sure that those are organizations that support a really diverse range of women's identities. And so by, and, and basically the partnerships are such that these are organizations that go really deep on understanding their members, but don't necessarily have a lot of technology behind that. And mm -hmm. so we're providing a way for their members to both, you know, connect with each other and find shared experiences. And we'll be providing data in aggregate to these organizations about the different trends in the lives of their members. And then they, in turn, are asking their members to share their trails on own trail, which adds to that larger database. So that helps us with, you know, kind of a, a diverse range of, of users coming onto the platform. And it also allows us to go really broad in terms of who we're serving because these organizations are going deep on the identities that they serve. And so it kind of gives us the win-win the of both breadth and depth there. And so that's, that's one of the ways that we're really intentionally creating that diversity on the site. That's really helpful. And I, so I hope this conversation is helpful to those of you who are listening. I was personally just really intrigued by what Rebecca is doing at Own Trail. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put those in the chat so that I can be sure um, to ask them. Um, let's talk a little bit um, more about your vision for a new paradigm of mentorship, serving women through their personal and professional lives. So, you know, 10 years from now, where do you see this going and how will you know that it worked? Yeah, I mean, what, what we're building is we really want to create a space where, like, this is where women can go to get both the, the inspiration and the, the guidance they're looking for and to share their own journeys to help others in a really scalable way, right? Because, I mean, just as a side note, like, I try to say yes to everyone that asks me to coffee or as it is now virtual coffee. And I still can't say yes to all of them. And, you know, we get to a certain point in our career where we want to be able to, to give back to everyone coming up behind us, but it just doesn't scale. And what we're sharing tends to be kind of repetitive anyway. <laughs> and so it's like, you know, we want to create this place where this is where women go to give back, to share what they've experienced, and then to answer questions that get asked about that and really engage on it. This is also where all women can go to really find what they need in terms of those shared experiences and the guidance and finding their own path through life. And it creates this ripple effect because what we end up with, um, in addition to a really strong community and a strong platform that really empowers the women that are using it, is we also are going to end up with this huge aggregate amount of anonymized data about what women experience in their lives. And one thing that I learned when I was writing Blaze Your Own Trail, because I weave a lot of data into the book, is that there are some huge gaps out there around the data that we know about women's lives. So as I was doing research, there was, there was a lot of questions I couldn't answer because the data wasn't out there. And um, there's a lot of data that was really old <laughs> and stale, um, especially as you start to get into kind of intersectional data, right? So what are the experiences that women have based on the different identities they hold, right? And so that's just, it's, it's missing and that's really important. So as we're able to surface that data, 
what that does is it can then create this ripple effect around all the different businesses and government organizations and just any decision makers that need to better understand women's lives in order to best support them and make the right decisions there. And so we're hoping to not only create this really empowered and action oriented community within Own Trail, but create a ripple effect in terms of how women are able to be seen and supported and valued in the world. That's really useful. So as you talk about that, um, I want to reference a conversation that we had before we went live uh, related to the fact that the trails that you build on Own Trail don't necessarily have dates associated with them. So when I'm listening to you, Rebecca, one of the things I'm curious about related to data is, you know, some of the studies that may be old about, you know, women who leave the workplace to have children and then resume the you know, a career. And without dates, that type of data might still be a gap. So I'm curious, you know, as you're looking at data, like what trends or um, other milestones in women's lives are most interesting and, and what you're learning from the data that you're gathering so far? Yeah, I mean, so the, the hypothesis behind why we're not collecting dates is both that a lot of people don't remember dates, but that also it's, it's a piece of information that a lot of women don't want to share. And we got that kind of anecdotally as we were building this, but then we've also actually created a user advisory group that, you know, we, what we really want to do as we build our own trail is be guided by our users. And, you know, kind of the, the old model of the company saying like, we are the company, this is what we're building. This is how you're going to use it. And you're going to like it is kind of, you know, hopefully we're moving past that and we really want to move into this new model of really user guided roadmaps and and idea generation so that being said we kind of ran that hypothesis by our user advisory group as well and everyone's like yeah i love that there's not dates you know i think that um both in terms of like the barrier to remembering and the barrier to wanting to kind of date yourself in these different ways is is one that people are glad is not there that being said a lot of people do add dates or timeframes to their milestones. And the trails are in chronological order. And it's kind of the sequencing that we think is really valuable in terms of the data set there. Um, Got it. And we'll be parsing a lot of the different, um, you know, the, the words that people are sharing to describe their different milestones to kind of see what trends we're picking up on there and, and doing some, some kind of natural language processing or kind of understanding what people are talking about through those milestones. Um, so we already have a data scientist on our um, group of advisors that's really helping us make sure that we're setting ourselves up for collecting the right data in, um, in really meaningful ways so that we can do very interesting things with it as we get more. Got it. I think it's yeah. so um, intriguing because I think there's not one of us who doesn't enjoy the exercise of really thinking about our own lives and what's significant. And then there's this added part of, of sharing, so feeling seen by others so that people can see, oh, this is the journey that you took. You know, who doesn't like to talk about themselves when asked? <laughs> um, but then there's this additional part of, can I find other people who have had similar journeys to mine? And if we face similar challenges, how did they rebound from that? And how did they um, find what was meaningful th for them next? Which, especially for women who may have had interruptions to their career by losing a job, or even at this time of pandemic, when so many people's livelihoods are in question, it just seems like such a powerful way to find other people who, who may have overcome similar challenge challenges and learn from them You know exactly what it was that helped them get through that. Exactly. Yeah, oh. it's really like the scenario of like the thing I'm navigating right now and how did other women who have been there kind of navigate that and the scenario of like how did people how did other women get to this place that I'm aspiring to and how you know and really realizing that there are so many ways there but then starting to kind of find my own path through that. But yeah, the, mm -hmm. the pandemic one is actually really interesting because um obviously didn't plan for that, but we're starting to see more and more milestones that are alluding to, you know, what's going on right now with, with the pandemic. And it'll be really interesting to see kind of all the different kind of similarities and differences as those emerge and where people go from there. So how much tolerance, Rebecca, do you see for people sharing the most difficult parts of their journey? So do you see at all yet a pattern of people downplaying the challenges or leaving? I mean, I guess you wouldn't know if people have left that out. Um, but what are you seeing in terms of people's, you know, authentic sharing of the most difficult parts of their journeys? Yeah, I mean, so we're really trying, we're celebrating the bumps in the road, you know, and so we're really trying to create a space that is extremely authentic across our personal and professional lives, because we know that's something that women are craving, and you can't really find that anywhere. It's very unique content right now. Um, and what we're seeing is extremely authentic sharing, like 
mind-blowingly authentic. I'm very moved by a lot of the trails that, that I keep seeing on there. And um, we see kind of two scenarios because we don't require women to share their real identities. Um, you can use a screen name. And so there's basically, all the trails are quite authentic, but there's the women who I think are probably a little bit more at a point in their lives where they feel very comfortable with their, their narrative and their journey and want to share both you know, the identities they hold and the authentic experiences that they've had and their real names. And so those tend to be a little bit more of the influencers, I think, or a little further along. And then there's women who still worry about having the, their really authentic journey tied to their true identity. And that's totally fine. So they use a screen name and that's really valuable too, because what we're building is a, a content based network as opposed to a profile based network. It's not about trying to like connect to people to people. It's about connecting experience to experience. And so by sharing the identities you hold and the experiences that you've been through, that's the really valuable piece of it. And so it doesn't need to be tied to your real name necessarily. Um, and a question just came in about a search function um, from Robert, which um, right now it's really just browsing trails one by one. What we're building out next is filtering. So being able to filter by, you know, different categories of milestones or, um, you know, and then from there, different identities that you hold. And then eventually we'll, we'll be able to build in search also. But I think that if we build in really robust filtering, that will solve most of the use cases. Um, because, you know, again, it's not necessarily searching for a specific person, but it's more trying to find those, those shared experiences and identities. So um, I have a question related to the scalability of mentoring that comes from sharing your trail, because mm -hmm. Rebecca, you mentioned, you know, there's no way that you could have virtual coffee with every woman who would want to learn from your journey. So, and you also said that the platform is designed to be content focused and not profile focused. So is there any aspect of community planned for the future in terms of, you know, I saw your trail and it inspired me and can I send you a question or a message? How does that work? Yeah, so what we're envisioning, and again, we're going to learn so much as we go because it's really early. We just launched in February. But what we're envisioning is that, you know, there will be, you know, women will have questions about each other's trails and each other's milestones and want to have those conversations. But what we believe is that with authenticity at its core and scalability, that the most valuable thing is to kind of ask and answer those questions with the whole community being part of it because you know what happens so often is like a question that one woman might ask me about my trail and then I answer that and then another woman will come along later and have that same question mm -hmm. and so um you know it'll be almost you know we're kind of envisioning like a little mini core thread on each milestone or each or, or each trail and then being able to even associate those with with different milestones on other people's trails but basically once I ask a question once then that's evergreen and it can reach other people that have that same question as well so then you don't have to answer the same question over yeah. and over again yeah also with scalability in mind right <laughs> yeah. yes indeed that makes a lot of sense so Rebecca we only have a few minutes left but one of the things I'd love to do is to hear about what question you're most often asked about your career and why you think it's the question that you're asked the most and then maybe the answer to it yeah. Um, so I guess <laughs> most, most often, both in one-on-one in -on -one conversations and on like panels and whatnot, I get asked about balancing, you know, personal and professional life, both in terms of like work and motherhood is a big one, but also, you know, I'm really passionate about different creative outlets that I have and different community engagement that I do. And, you know, and people ask about that balance. And, you know, while I know that there's, there's some pushback on like, why do women always get asked that and men don't, which I do agree with that. But also the reason that people are asking is because it's not as obvious. And I think particularly as women, our personal and professional lives are so inherently intertwined. And yet there's not really that visibility into how or, you know, like how we make that work or what that looks like. And so people are wondering, and, you know, especially I think with a lot of women that I talk to one-on-one, -on -one, they have a similar misconception to what I once had, which is that like, I need to get as far as I'm going to go in my career before I have kids, because then everything's going to plateau from there, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, and similar, like I need to either decide between like, you know, creative outlets or my professional world because I can't do both. Or, you know, there's a lot of kind of both misconceptions and worries and fears about it and just wanting that visibility. So I think like that's why people are asking. And that's really a lot of the reason behind why Own Trail is really focused on both that intersection of personal and professional because the same answer, you know, I'll, I'll have one answer for how I balance that and all the different women who are kind of making these same 
trade-offs and decisions and, you know, and integrations in their life will have other answers and really having visibility into that is, I think, what, what women are craving and what's really important. So, you know, and to give, you know, my answer to that. Yes, please. That, I was about to follow up. <laughs> yeah, is that um, for me, well, A, like my career didn't plateau at all after having kids. Um, I think part of that was being at a really good company, but also that, um, you know, I think in a lot of ways, motherhood makes you more adept at leadership and, you know, and um, more empathetic and, and more able to, to really, you know, do work in, in creative ways. And so that wasn't an issue for me, but also for me, because I do fill my life with a lot of different activities, the reason I'm able to balance that is because I pay really close attention to what gives me energy and what sucks energy away from me. And I try to really fill my life with the things that give me energy. And those are things like writing and getting involved in my community and doing various forms of art. And um, those things all kind of put energy back into me and gives me capacity to do a lot because they, because I'm so passionate about them. If I was filling my life with half as many things that drained me, it wouldn't be sustainable. So that's really, that's really helpful. So um, we did not talk at all about your interest in aerial acrobatics. And I don't know, I don't know if there's anything that you want to share about that, but it's just an intriguing, different interest of yours. Yeah, it's, it's super fun. It's, I mean, because it's both a, a physical outlet and a creative outlet and normally a social outlet when I'm allowed to be around friends. And so, and, but, you know, I think the interesting thing to share about that and other creative outlets I have. So I started doing aerial acrobatics, um, 11 years ago when I turned 30. So before that, I wasn't a dancer. I wasn't a gymnast. This was something I discovered at age 30. And I discovered that I liked writing about um, six years ago when I was asked to write a guest blog post for someone. And then since then, I have, you know, I've had a Huffington Post byline and I have a Forbes byline now and I've written a book and that I didn't discover until I was about 35. And then I just recently got into embroidery, which is <laughs> just another random thing. But, you know, the reason I mention all this is because, um, I think that a lot of times we, we kind of assume that like whatever we've kind of established as the things that we like to do or the things we're good at happen at an earlier age and then you kind of just run with that. And I think that I just, I like to share that you can discover new things about yourself that you're good at and that you enjoy and that fuel you at, at any point in life and to stay open to those things because some of these are the most fulfilling parts of my life now. That is an amazing thing. And I definitely identify with that because I didn't start my company until I was 41. So yeah. I think if I'm doing the math correctly, so I didn't, you know, discover this entrepreneurial streak until later. So, yeah. um, well, me yeah. too, I guess I started my company this year and I'm 41. So same. <laughs> so Erica says, um, she's exploring the concept of what do I enjoy doing? And that's why she started riding a motorcycle and painting. And I Ooh, love watching love Erica's that. adventures on Facebook. It's really fun. <laughs> so awesome. thank you for those of you who have joined us today. I want to make sure that you know how to get in touch with Rebecca later. Um, so we would encourage uh, the women on the call to share your own trail by visiting owntrail.com. And as I mentioned, I'm exploring that myself. Um, you can also pick up Rebecca's book, Blaze Your Own Trail trail. And uh, I think we included the link to buy the book from the website or potentially find out more about the book from your website. And if you have any questions for me, you can feel free to reach out. Um, my email is Becky at weavinginfluence.com. Now next week on the Weekly Connection, we'll be hosting um, Dana Reiser. And Dana is passionate about wellness and um, has a lot of interesting things to share. She's working on her first book. So I hope that you'll join us next week for the weekly connection. Um, also, for those of you who have been joining our other webinars, we do have a webinar tomorrow that requires registration. It's in partnership with Barrett Kohler Authors, and it's a diversity and inclusion uh, focused webinar with author Tiffany Jana. So if you haven't already gotten information about that, Kelly, I don't know if it's too late to to grab that link. I will be sending out some follow-up this afternoon with Rebecca's links, and then I'll also include that link for tomorrow's webinar that does require registration if you'd like to learn from Tiffany Jana and Barrett Kohler Publishers. Oh, good, you got the link, yes. All right, so we'll leave this open for a second so you can grab the link. I hope you'll register and join me tomorrow. We have a record number of registrants, over 1,200 for tomorrow. Um, so we hope you'll join us. So Rebecca, thank you so much for sharing. Do you have any parting wisdom for those of us who are still hanging out today? Thank you so much for having me. No, I mean, I would, you know, again, just the, the idea of that we're all getting it 
it right in our own ways and, and we can make it through hard things. And also just in terms of own trail that, you know, yes, if you identify as a woman, I'd love you to share your trail, but also for anybody, if there are women in your life that have inspired you, I'd love for you to share it out with them and, um, and you know, be part of this movement. So thank you. Thanks, Rebecca.